Halo 2 was the first Halo game to really pop off on online multiplayer. And besides the fact that just multiplayer in Halo in general has always been a really fun experience, the maps that went into Halo 2 definitely contributed to the fact that Halo 2's multiplayer was so much fun. But what if we decided to take on the very difficult task of ranking every single Halo 2 map from worst to best? What would our personal lists look like? Well, we went ahead and attempted it, and this is what we came up with. And real quick, before we get into the video, Luke and I are going to stream Halo Custom Games with viewers later on tonight on our Twitch channel. So if you guys want to join, make sure you guys check out the channel link in the pinned comment down below. This is going to be possibly a weekly thing where every Tuesday we host some sort of viewer game night type thing. We'd appreciate you guys following us on Twitch as well. Now, of course, this list is completely based off of Luke and I's own personal experiences. We weren't really big in the competitive scene back in the day, and we just like to play Halo, whether that be custom games or random matchmaking games. So for all you extremely competitive players, we'd love to know what your actual ranking would be and how it differs from ours as more casual players. So starting things off on this list, when we were trying to pick what would come down to be the worst level, we tried to look at the larger picture of Halo and what legacy each map created and what type of gameplay these maps fostered. And when we're having to pick the bottom of our list, Uplift was the one that we ended up landing on. Now, a lot of you might not remember this map, but this map was actually originally exclusive to Halo 2 Vista back in the day. And even with that, it wasn't that good of a map to begin with. Sure, it's a typical big team battle game, and of course you can have some fun in any big team battle setting, but when it comes to actual strategic map design, this one just feels like it's kind of lacking with the large amount of open spaces and sight lines, and just the general structure to this level. And even though there's vehicles abundantly placed throughout this map, it never really feels like there's any go-to strategy you can use in this level. Even jumping in a vehicle, you're super vulnerable wherever you are. Still, even the worst map coming out of Halo 2 is still a lot better than some of the best maps in other shooter video games, so we do have to praise Uplift. I mean, in the grand scheme of map design, it's not the worst thing in the world, but when it comes to Halo 2, which is such a top tier shooter experience, yeah, Uplift is going to be down here. Then next on our list, another map and the only other map other than Example, which was a custom map design preset, just used as an example of what type of maps you can make, exclusive to Halo 2 Vista. We wanted to also put District down here on the list. It is slightly better than Uplift. However, this map also just doesn't really play too well in the online multiplayer setting. Now, Halo 2 allows for up to 16 players, and with the size of this map, it almost feels like something that would be better off with some sort of large scale multiplayer, like maybe 32 players or more. It's ambitious in its size, and it is interesting to see how they incorporated parts of the campaign level outskirts that this level is obviously drawn upon. But with all of the indoor areas you can go in, the bridges that you can hide under or walk across, it's just so spread out, but still too narrow for actual vehicle usage that this map never really ended up becoming anything bigger than what it is and it ended up just being this often skipped over map from Halo 2. This next one might be a little bit more controversial that it is this low in the list, but this is, of course, just off of our own personal preference, and we're really not a fan of burial mounds when it comes down to it. Maybe it's just another big team battle map that just isn't as good as some of the better big team battle maps, but it definitely also has something to do with the aesthetic that just looks a little bit bland here. Now, of course, that's the design they were going for. They wanted it to look like this desolate area, but it's definitely Definitely nothing that we're super excited to jump on and play some burial mounds after all these years. Colossus is another one of those maps that just seems to always be outbid by better versions of similar maps in Halo 2. It seems like there's a lot of very open sight lines and not a lot of cover, which can lead to some pretty big spawn trapping issues along the way. <laughs> and those darn conveyor belts always pushing people off the edge here and there. This map did have the legacy though of being one of the go-to favorite if you were looking for some type of noob combo map that was good for this and this map's the one to do it if you're trying to just live your best life and you can also rack up grenades pretty easily on this one too. But yeah, it's an okay map but there's better maps in Halo 2. Next, moving up in the list is Waterworks which is another massive map when it comes to Halo 2. Though this map did have some use in those big team battles 16 player game types and it worked well in things like Capture the Flag or other types of various objective games. 
games. Halo 2 really tried to expand on the success that Blood Gulch was in Halo 1 and introduce more large scale maps that had kind of two bases to it. And this map works in doing so, though at the same time, the size and the layout and the stalagmites and the whole underground aesthetic, but still giving you banshees doesn't necessarily work out as well as some of the better maps, but it's definitely not a map that if it loads up in a big team battle matchmaking session that I'm necessarily going to complain and groan about. I can have a good time playing big team battle in this one. Containment was really, really close with this one as well, as it's another huge map. Same idea of having these two bases on opposite ends, though containment slightly bodes a little bit better just because of the openness of it, but not in the same type of openness we saw on Uplift. It does have sight lines that are distant, but you also do have structures. You can get cover in it and get your footing back on. This one kind of feels like an early Castle Wars type thing going on, and we kind of liked that. It's a little bit ugly, of course, not the best Christmas level for sure, but as a big team battle map, it works. But if we can scale things down a little bit more, we can talk about the level Terminal next, which is still a large map that works well in various game types, especially big team game types. Now, of course, this map is not symmetrical like other maps we've looked at. It has this asymmetrical thing to it, but it still works well here, and that's something we appreciate because it does give a different environment and a different flow of gameplay. We also really appreciate the fact that they decided to kind of take the idea of new Mombasa and expand on it and give us a new area to explore outside of just what we had seen in the Halo 2 campaign level. And this was the first time we got to see kind of a little different look of this area. They even had a map of new Mombasa, which was the first time we'd ever seen that, though Halo 3 ODST makes that obsolete. You can see a lot of the ideas that were introduced in this map actually put into Halo 3 ODST's larger design. And that's also a little thing that we appreciate as Halo fans. Next on our list is Desolation, which actually was a remake of Derelict in Halo Combat Evolved. And at first we really didn't like this map and we were gonna put it fairly low on the list. However, the more we looked at it, we could find some reasons to appreciate this map a whole lot more. It's very obvious that with this map, they were trying to do something that would appeal more for the smaller close quarters gameplay rather than the large big team battle type gameplay that was already pretty prevalent in Halo 2. They also made some pretty big refinements to the original map design, which was nice here. However, our big complaint comes down to just the lack of cover when you're going into this level. Like if you're trying to give your shields a second to recharge, you're gonna be really limited on your options here, but it does lead to some fun and chaos and you kind of have to think differently about how you're gonna play through this one. However, with that map, we feel like Warlock is just the better overall version of the same thing. Now, of course, Warlock was also based off of a Halo CE map with Wizard. And yeah, Warlock just feels like this more symmetrical arena that can still lead for smaller team games and also do some sort of multi-team stuff as well if it feels like it. We just kind of prefer playing on Warlock over Desolation. And this probably contributed to the reason why Warlock ended up being remade in Halo 2 Anniversary. And it actually looks really good in Halo 2 Anniversary and it still plays pretty well too. And then next, we also wanted to put Relic or Remnant from Halo 2 Anniversary here on this list for similar reasons, except in the sense that this map is more suited for big team battles. It definitely has a very different map design compared to the maps we just took a look at. This one could work in both a smaller team setting or a big team setting, and it, while not exactly symmetrical, there's a lot of open spaces and easy ways to navigate through this level, but not open enough spaces where you never feel like there's cover. You could be running along the beach side and still have rocks to drop behind. And that's something we really appreciate. We think this level is probably a little bit underrated, but when you look at everything that Halo 2 provided, you can kind of understand why we put it here on our list. Next on our list goes to Gemini, which is actually one of the smallest maps in Halo 2. But surprisingly, though this map is small, it actually doesn't ever feel too small. It's probably the mix of having the indoor and outdoor sections, and then also having the use of teleporters to quickly navigate around. This map's actually pretty good for arena gameplay. And while in objective game types like Oddball or maybe King of the Hill, it's a little bit clunkier for a regular Slayer type game, it can be a whole lot of fun and earns its spot in the top 15 Halo 2 maps. Then we can start turning to some of these maps that really created awesome legacies for fans who have been playing Halo for a really long time, like Ivory Tower, which is number 14 on our list. Not only did this map later get remade into Halo Reach's Reflection, but this map was a lot of fun because it kind of broke the standard Halo map layout, especially since it came out as DLC later on. Now this map is symmetrical, but it's split in a very interesting way where it kind of has path 
pathways that intersect with the symmetry and it can lead to some really interesting movement patterns which is really great for certain types of close quarter games like Slayer. You can kind of start to see more modern gameplay approaches when you're playing on a map like Reflection where you start considering things like flanking to assist your teammates or just different traveling routes and different patterns to move through which weren't really things you thought about as heavily when you're playing other maps in Halo games but this map probably helped contribute to the future of Halo and just the process and decisions into what type of design works in Halo. This next map might be a little bit controversial especially because we're putting it up as high as we are but Backwash from Halo 2 is one of those maps that was just a fun map if you were really into custom games. I remember playing games of Infection on here back before Infection was a game type you just had to change teams mid game but also weird things like sword fighting, rockets, snipers, whatever you were into. This map was just this open free-for-all that was a little bit chaotic but also really fun and the aesthetic here is really unique. They pulled from the Halo Combat Evolved level 343 Guilty Spark, put it on the new Halo ring. Pantient Tangent is just flying around the map which is just a super underrated Halo character. I mean maybe he's not underrated he didn't really do anything but hey he's here doing something new and that's cool. Coming in at number 12 on our list is Foundation, another map people might not fully agree with us on but this map is just a square. Four corners and you can just go for it and for multi-team this is really fun if you're just kind of doing a LAN party and you got your group of four doing split screen on your TV or maybe you're on Xbox Live and you have your group of four or whatever but it's just really easy to pick up if you're not an experienced Halo player and it made the game really accessible whenever you're just jumping into Halo with a lot of people and maps like this really could use a comeback to an extent. Sure we don't need to see perfectly symmetrical maps with four corners in it and a free-for-all arena type setting but every once in a while maybe 343 can throw us a bone going forward and put a map like this in the game in a certain game type or something. We've talked a little bit about how Hang'em High in Halo Combat Evolved was a little bit of a chaotic mess at times with all the cross sniping with pistols and just the various sight lines and when they brought the map back into Halo 2 in the form of Tombstone a lot of people were kind of unsure what this would mean and actually there were a lot of tweaks and changes brought upon this map that made this map a lot more playable than the original Hang'em High but still kept the spirit of having that cross map chaos without necessarily the unfairness you sometimes feel if you get spawn killed right away. This map just feels a little bit bigger, there's a lot of alternate routes you can make that fit better into other game types which become accessible now and just the aesthetic here looks a lot better than it did back in the day. And now we wanted to enter the top 10 zone which is kind of the top tier maps. These maps are probably maps that had some sort of legacy after Halo 2 for one reason or another and they are very deserving of their spots here whether you agree with us fully or not. But we do have to talk about elongation a little bit. Now this map once again never really saw much of this type of map in the future. It seemed like Bungie avoided doing things with the moving floors and whatnot and while this level might not have made as much of an impact as the other maps on this list. When I think Halo 2 I always think of this map for some reason because it was something very unique and it stood out and there was room for some random game types that just played better here. Whether you're doing something random like close-up shotguns or you're rocket launching your enemies around the corners while riding on a conveyor belt, it kind of felt like one of the first custom games maps. And as a more casual player that was something really cool and I really like that. And then as Halo really started to hit the competitive scene it seemed like there were two types of Halo players. The people who really liked to play midship and then everyone else. But yeah Midship wasn't necessarily my favorite map back in the day, but it definitely was one of those maps that had a large impact in the Halo community and in arena type gameplay. And looking back now, I can actually really appreciate what this map contributed to the Halo community, maybe more so than I would like to jump on Halo 2 and play a game on midship. Still aesthetically it was interesting enough and being able to navigate around this map was cool and you can appreciate the fact that they've put this Halo level in a lot of other Halo games down the road. Turf might be another one that a lot of people don't really talk about enough. Definitely a sleeper level here but once again it was one of those levels that really took into consideration how players move and what routes they take when engaging in multiplayer games. Now while we talked about Ivory Tower being really good and being able to pick flanks this map kind of takes it a step 
further and introduces different routes for bigger team battle type games where maybe you're looking at different ways to approach an objective rather than just different ways to approach your enemy. I think a lot of people really like turf and they understand that this map is different in layout from the other types of Halo 2 maps. And as we looked at all of these Halo 2 maps for this video specifically, we really realized that there's so much variety in map design philosophy and it just seems like a lot of different approaches were made and it did lead to one of the largest varieties in any Halo game. But then in number seven, we wanted to put Sanctuary, which was also Shrine in Halo 2A, and it was even featured in Halo Reach as well. But this map does a really good job at keeping a smaller to medium size arena ready to go, but still have the two sides effect to it with a central choke point and two different pathways you can go on the sides. It definitely took some of the feels of the original Battle Canyon from Halo CE, but then turned it into more of a viable three lane map. And in a competitive scene, this map became a staple in maps that people went to. But there was also Headlong, which was one of my favorite maps from back in the day. Not only do we see another side of New Mombasa, but we actually see a big team battle map that isn't symmetrical, but still is really, really fun. And it feels big enough to breathe and use vehicles and fly around, but also small enough to get to objectives whenever you need to, which keeps the game varied. It never feels like you die and are respawned across the map and have to spend a large portion of time running back to the action. This map has a good way of letting you respawn and breathe a little bit, but get right into the action immediately and maybe help your team out. And I just really liked Headlong quite a bit. It was just a really unique map. And we haven't really seen anything like this that incorporates buildings in not only the form of cover, but also elevation in the Halo franchise in the same way, at least, that Headlong did. And we'd really like to see more maps like this or just remake it again like they did in Reach and put it in some more modern Halo games. But what is Halo without, of course, Blood Gulch or Coagulation in Halo 2 and Blood line in Halo 2 Anniversary. I mean, this map is so iconic and synonymous with Halo, where just when you talk Halo multiplayer, it seems like a lot of people just think Blood Gulch right away or Coagulation right away, because this was the go-to map for big team battle in both Halo games. And honestly, for the most part, they left this map unchanged from Halo CE, maybe adding that little extra level for the Banshee, and it worked. It was a great way to not only play the sandbox that was introduced in Halo 2, but also there were some really awesome times that were played just on this level. And while some people are going to disagree here again, there's this ongoing theme if you guys haven't noticed, Beaver Creek is such a fun map to play on, whether it's Halo CE or Halo 2, but Halo 2 in particularly because of the newer weapons that were just introduced and the mechanics that went into Halo 2. I don't know, when you played this in Battle Canyon in Halo CE, it worked, but in Halo 2 it plays completely differently in Halo Spirit. No longer are you necessarily worried about the Magnum just cross mapping you as much as you're worried about what's going on with those power weapons because power weapons definitely became way more viable and way more useful in the Halo 2 environment and sandbox than in the Halo CE one. And this map kind of got transformed into just a regular setting for a multiplayer game into an actual competitive map with stakes and map control being something that needed to be considered if you actually wanted to win whatever game type you're playing. But then we have to enter the top three territory for Halo 2, which is such an incredibly difficult decision to make here. But Zanzibar is such a fun level, and it was cool that not only was this level just prevalent in Halo 2, but they even brought it in Halo 3 as a launch map, and it worked because Bungie just knew that this map was so good already that it could work in Halo 3 as well. But the original Zanzibar not only was really cool by just incorporating that large fan in the middle of the map, but it actually was separated in multiple sections. That meant that if you were playing in a smaller team, team-based game, like a 4v4, you're able to kind of know where to go to get to the action. There's this middle section where you're going to probably face off, and then you have your back areas, either the beach or inside, to spawn in and get weapons. But then this map can also be utilized in a big team battle way, and it's a lot more chaotic, but there's enough room for individual fights to happen without it just being who has the numbers in each individual battle, and that's something that's appreciated as well here. Tie that with its awesome aesthetic, just having this factory on the beach? 
I mean, who doesn't want to work there? And this map is definitely one that's just god tier in the Halo universe. Ascension is another one that is just so important to Halo because this map was really great for objective game types and it was another map that really considered map control and that was a major thing and in smaller 4v4 settings it was so important to strategize with your teammates and have some sort of strategic placement and work together to achieve a victory rather than what we had maybe been doing in some of the other types of maps that didn't really foster the same side of competitiveness. Now the map is a little bit blander looking though the remake in Halo 2 Anniversary is absolutely gorgeous and has possibly one of the best Halo skyboxes but definitely this map was extremely important for Halo's legacy. But when it comes down to the best map in Halo 2 it's got to go to Lockout easily or Lockdown in Halo 2 Anniversary. The BR became such a big deal in Halo 2 and this was the map for testing your battle rifle skills out or facing off against people whether you're going in squads or you're doing a 1v1 lockout was the map to go to and it was a mix of having these equal sight lines across where you have a fair shot against other players but also still having enough cover to move around and not necessarily get trapped in the same area and try to take on a different approach at angling against your enemies now this map of course wasn't just made for brs and it works well with the other game types along the way as it works for both mid to long range battles so thank you lockout for the legacy that you created the map looks so great with the snow aesthetic too and it makes the colors of the spartans kind of pop out a little bit more meaning you don't have visibility issues if they're running under some weird light or there's some random fog like on backwash so this clearly was the map we thought of when we thought of halo 2 and we really wanted to put it here on this list and we think it has earned it but like we said earlier we really want to know the opinions from the community we are eventually working on ranking every single halo map across all of the halo games and we're going to put into consideration the community's feedback as well and rearrange some of our lists so let us know in the comments down below which map is severely underrated in our list and where we should maybe put it but hey if you liked this video can you take a quick moment first double check you are in fact subscribed down below with notifications on it helps us out a lot we get to do more stuff like this and that's cool. Also, if you want to talk with us on Twitter, you can follow me at Rocket Elijah, and you can also follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. So feel free to follow us on there and communicate with us a bit. We would kind of appreciate it. But otherwise, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.